They couldn't tell. Or it's either was bad. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, you ready? Some of us is leaving have uh, some other uh, obligations tonight, so we're going to try to move this meeting right along. And so, with that being said, uh, Carolyn, if you're prepared. And I'll call them the December 20th, 2022 meeting to order. And Carolyn, if you could call roll call, please. Welsh? Here. Morgan? Here. Stan Anderson? Here. Houston? Here. William? Here. Hawk? Here. Mike Anderson? Here. We do have a form. Okay, we will stand and say goodbye. We will pledge allegiance. Mike, will you lead us tonight? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, is there any order of business for emergency, no. Carolyn? Okay, and there is no one attending on Zoom, is that correct? Correct. Okay, with that being said, do, uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Kelly has moved. Second. Stan has seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion uh, to approve the agenda. Does anyone recognize a conflict of interest that they need to declare on the agenda tonight? Okay, no conflict of interest indicated. Okay, uh, I would like a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes some minutes, the claims from the city, the fire department, the library, the budget reports, the community center report, and the sales tax and the cash and money market balance. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Rick approve. Second. Mike seconded. Any um, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. That brings us to the pay request number two to TDM, Carolyn. Yes, they submitted a second uh, pay request for um, the work that Todd uh, or TDM investigating has done. And that is in the amount of the, I've got that. In the amount of um, 65, 559, 25. Yes. There's a second page to look at that, you know, is that amounts to and that kind of thing. So, so second. Okay, th there's been a motion by Mike, seconded by Dan to approve the pay request number two for sixty-five thousand five hundred fifty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. Twenty-five. Twenty-five cents. Any further discussion? And this is um Everything that's been worked on uh, are where we're at so far with in the Kelly Avenue Gloria Street project. Is any questions or discussion? And, and that's done, correct? That that I mean, not the Gloria, but the Kelly part. Looks very close to being yeah. done. You can see a street, the water uh, taps are sticking in the air and the drain. Uh, the ditches along the side of the road. Yeah, I've seen it at night, just having yeah. run up there in the veins. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds good then. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, that brings us to public comments. Um, a person can speak for three minutes to address their concerns. Is there anyone that would like to uh, give public comment tonight? Zach. Awesome. Good. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to, I'm mean, Zach Hoffman under public comment or myself. Um, I'd like to first start off by thanking the Public Works uh, for their great work that they've done in 
by cleaning the streets and everything and that he's continuing to or they are continuing to do i guess with them being gone and i saw them working today and again thanks uh to the businesses like the food center and stuff working to open um to for people to be able to get food and everything when needed and all that for emergencies um the other deal was i'm sure like all you guys know there's a lot of Truck congestion in the South Boulevard and Glen Street area um, is because they had no place to go. We had an opportunity to get a truck stop here to open up um, an area for these truckers to go and for them to maybe take a hot shower or something where they have been stranded for days in their truck. Some had their kids with them and they had no place to go because they were stranded in their truck because there's no truck stop for them to go to and park their trucks and do that stuff. Um, if we're really wanting to keep truck stops out of here, maybe the city should look at doing like a shelter area or something for these people when they get stranded here. So they don't have to walk to restaurants to have a hot meal or something, or and there, there could be showers there. I mean, the powerhouse seems like a perfect option right there. We got city property, a big lot right there that there could be truck parking on there. Um, there's our showers there. There's a food facility place there that could provide shelter for these people when we do have these types of events. Um, I mean, it, it just, it made it harder for public works to clear the area because of the, all the snow drifts that I created. Same with the DOT. The DOT has South Boulevard. I'm sure they would love to clear all that snow out and not have to deal with all the drifts that was created by all those trucks being parked there. Um, I mean, it's just some things to think about. And if we can't accommodate these people when they're stranded, then I mean, it's not good for us. Thank you. Powerhouse is a good idea, actually. Very have all the amenities right there for. Yep. And, Again, I've said that this town needs a recreational place. You can multi-purpose that thing into a shelter and a recreational place, but just think of something for these guys. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Yes. Carol. Good evening. Carol Hodge, an old trucker. <laughs> And I will tell you that this was very poor advertisement for Wall. Very. I have spent time in truck stops in Blizzard, in Bismarck, North Dakota. I've been in Butte, Montana. And we have been held up in South Dakota and in Nebraska. All of those places have truck stops, and those truck stops are very good for travelers, not just truckers, travelers, because there were people in cars who were stranded here. <clears throat> yes, they can stay in the hotel, but where do they go? Who's open? How do you drive there? You can't carry your kids that to snow yet. It's up like to eat. I am ashamed that this app is still <clears throat> the case over getting a truck stop. It's the best thing you could do for this app. It would bring people in. They stop at a truck stop, they are right here at Wall Drug. Okay, we're going to eat. Now we'll go over to Wall Drug, and we're going to spend some money there, and we're going to get something, and then we can be on the way, we get draft or we get to or whatever, whatever. But in a storm, they are a necessity. The truck drivers can sleep in a bed, not their sleeper. They can take a shower. They can eat. They can sit and visit with people. They can talk to their dispatchers. They can talk to the company that they're running with. They can get a hold of the company at the other end if they have to be there. Tell them where they are, what's going on, what's going on around them. We are absolutely 
missing the boat. And I am ashamed of it because we're spending money when we could be making it. And is there anybody that wants to spend money when they can be making it? I don't think so. I know I don't like to just throw it in the air and see where it's going to land. If people want to keep on fighting them, let the people who want to fight them come up with the money. Because we don't want to do it in the city anymore. We want to come stop. And that's what I've got to say, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me talk. Absolutely. And you did it right within two seconds of your time frame. Good job. Thank you very much. Okay, yes. Uh, the the storm, we're going to address that again later in our agenda. Uh, rare that it runs for five days like that. Uh, but it was an overwhelming and, uh, situation. And Garrett will be here uh, later. He's just running a bit late right now. It could be ice. We aren't going to have a bad storm, but it might be a dust storm. You never know. Well, it might be a long winter. This storm is not going to go away with this kind of temperature. And um, the they're pre predicting uh, above average precipitation, which God only knows we need it. But uh, they're there's going to be challenges, probably. I don't know how many people were alive during 1949, but we had a blizzard every three to five days for yeah. months. The Stanley. highway between here and Rapid City <clears throat> was closed. Yeah. You're right about that. My dad talked about that often. So I can read about it. I lived it. Uh, okay. Quick, quick add on with her. Um, I, not with her, I'm sorry, but a quick on for me. Um, she mentioned that the there was like family strand here too. And with me plowing snow on Crane Road, I did see people pitch a tent in the public park. We, I don't know if the, all the hotels are full and they couldn't get a room, but they, we did have someone camping in our park. Maybe they didn't have anywhere to go and they, they were, I don't know, low on money or gas or whatever, but for some reason they camped during that deal out there. So. Again, going back to shelter, recreational facility, it'd be nice and yeah. Yeah, I hear you. So I was stuck in a storm over in Minnesota years ago. Yeah. And the, they didn't have a truck stop either. The thing they did was open up their community center. And that is something maybe we could look into. I mean this was a weird story. I mean, she gave me Christmas. Five days. But, you know, that's something should have been. What's that? Who thought was going to get that bad, too? Was that Red Cross trailer who caught some of that down? I think well, we have some here. Don't we? we did. No, they're in that trailer, I believe, that's where they are. But we had discussed, um, we were concerned about liability the last time this was in a discussion about opening up this storm. But um, we we definitely need to plan something and the powerhouse is another option too. Well, I think in the past we have opened the like community center and times there's not a lot of utilities, but it's something. Well, we can work with that dust and will it. You know, he can take a look at our what we do have for facilities and give us some ideas and work from there. I mean, I for uh, I wasn't anticipating it happen that you know when they started predicting the storm and the amount of moisture and stuff, I kind of just thought well, it's gonna be a storm, you know, and that was kind of my bad because I really got hosed. But uh, you know, I mean props to you know all of the I mean we got alert, I got alerts on phone i mean it it, I, it was poor planning on my part you know? but it kept changing you know it said oh it's going to be done it wasn't it wednesday at five o'clock and then all of a sudden it was thursday and then it, you know it just it did 
keep changing, or at least what I was looking at. Yeah. So Chris, far, did you have come in? We deal with the same liability issues and maybe alternate ways to do it. You guys, I'm sure, know about this uh, is a, a rider on the city's insurance policy for storms. Um, and then I don't know, maybe Stephanie could tell us uh, if there's a way to do a hold harmless or a uh, something of that sort that if people were coming into the shelter. They had to agree to sign a, a hold harmless or a waiver of some kind um, and say, you know, we'll open this up. But if you slip and fall on, on you know, wet tile, I'm sorry, that's the nature of the beast. You know what I mean? Some kind of, of hold harmless or waiver, if that's a possibility. Okay. All right. Good comments. All right, moving to item number 11, second reading of the ordinance 2205. And um, as indicated, uh, this is a second reading. And you've made all those changes that we talked about, correct? Well, this one, there were no changes discussed at the last um, meeting. Um, but it just needed the second reading. The changes was really with the resolution to sync up better, better which right. then we just moved it to the next uh, meeting. So they would be approved at the same time. I'll make a move to approve second reading. Okay, Stan is moved. Second. Jerry has seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay, motion carries. So that indicates a second, and it uh, will be published December 28th. Is that the indication? Mm -hmm. time I can get it to the paper. So. Okay. And then uh, resolution 2218, the housing incentives. And the part that she added here was no rebate for the sixth year or after. That was the comment that that we had a concern about, she did fix that. And then also that it was just for the city's portion. Yeah, just and clarify. Then, yeah, clarify yes. that. That was another comment. So. Okay, would I have a motion to approve? Yes, to approve. Rick, have second. you? Stan is seconded. Any other questions or concerns? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 2218 has passed. Okay, contingency. Correct that one. That is just something I put in there just in case once I run the expenses, if we over budget that I didn't plan for with the supplement, then I can use contingency to supplement that and we did not need to. So, okay. It's just a safety net for me. <laughs> so that was number 13 and we are striking it. Right. Okay, so then item 14, combined 2023 election with county agreement. Please help us understand. Sure. Well, for one thing, this is an off year for the county. Um, so they would actually just be running the election for us. They would do our, be doing our publication. So all expenses would be our own. In other years, they ask if we want to go with them during their election and then we have a share of costs so and we never do that either they're way more expensive we can run an election quite quite a bit more efficiently than if we join with the county but it's not a decision we get to make i always bring her with me so, so. but i would not recommend doing this it's my opinion. so you want us to not a consensus to not have the county Agreed. Agreed. Okay. We don't, you don't need a motion, just to just a consensus. Okay. Just Does the me. council yeah. consent Agreed. to not working with the county on the twenty twenty three election? <clears throat> yeah. Consent. 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 Okay. There you go. All right. That brings us to item number fifteen, which is the Wall School District Superintendent Report. Oh. You got any snow over there, Ms. Oh, Dr. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, I was busy typing and then I so um part of that though is 
we do advertise. Um, I would want approval to advertise with the wall school and the town of Wasta and then combine the election with the wall school with the other town. You do want approval for that, okay? Yeah, that's just the three entities. But. Okay, would I have a motion to approve Make working? Motion. Is there a second? I mean, no, no, I mean, yeah, is there yeah. a second? Yes. It's been second. moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank we you. will work with the school in Wasta and, and uh, our, ourselves. Okay, that brings us then, Dr. Pittman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When I come in, I, I put my flannel on and I said, well, I don't know if I'll fit in, but it's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to, to tremendously thank the city crew for all the help they did up at the school and, and will continue to do. Wow, those guys really worked hard. I mean, right where I was living, uh, where I lived during the storm, it was like they went all the time. I, mean, just, I, I really appreciate all the hard work they did and and um, so forth. And um, you know, it, it was more a storm than I projected. I I thought last week that we would be back at school on Thursday, and uh, Friday afternoon I was like I predicted this. But you know, it is really hard to predict storms as they come in. You know, and, and that one was a, a goofy one, and even what's coming next is coming a little faster than I projected too. So I'm still waiting to see what we do for school tomorrow. But uh, uh, last Monday morning, well, uh, last Monday morning, I, I about seven o'clock, you know, I had been pacing all weekend on what I was gonna do about this storm. And, and it occurred to me, you know, why not try going remote? And uh, I, I went to school and uh, I sent an email out to the staff, let's go remote. And I was really impressed. My whole staff jumped up together and uh, uh, provided what the kids need. And Monday afternoon when they left, um, grades uh, three through 12 went home online. And grades uh, kindergarten through second grade had whole packets. They prepared for the whole week. And I thought, OK. I thought it was a little bit of an overkill, but I'm sure glad they went all three days because uh, it, it was needed. And uh, since we have allowed, we provided education opportunities for every kid in the district, we can call that an actual school day according to the Department of Education. So we don't have to make up those three days, we're done. And, uh, you know, I, I really thought back and forth, of, you know, you know, is that a is that a one to one education as if they were in class? No, you know, you could argue back and forth. No, because you know, there's just different options at home too that kids can learn from too, and that's something we're going to look at is the uh, learning activities they can do at home during remote days too. Uh, but also, you know, I just go to school on Fridays after a five four day. You know, five day school we get part on kids, especially in the winter time. And I just really wanted to start 2023 on a clean slate, but we'll see about tomorrow. But um, so we did go remote. We did send a survey out to all the parents and staff, and we're in the process of uh, uh, getting the information of, of thoughts of what parents thought of it, uh, how it went. Uh, I I really think this could be a rough winter. I, I foresee doing this again because you know January and February are hard, and I I just don't want to tack on a bunch of Fridays too. And so uh, trying to balance that, trying to work that in the system. But you know we have spent a tremendous amount of money on technology over the past couple of decades, and and I felt that it was worth a try. And um, what we've seen so far in our survey data is that uh, about 75% of the people that have responded liked it. And uh, after that, you know, they liked it, but there's some things they would like to adjust and so forth. So if it's some good information that's come back in the survey, it is still open. Uh, parents out there, I really appreciate if you went to your email and, and checked it out. Uh, Let's see here. Um, 
the other thing we have going on, and, and tomorrow night we'll have our school board meeting. Uh, we were supposed to have it last Tuesday, but it got postponed. And, and um, we have con have really condensed down our uh, school board agenda for tomorrow night so that we're not, we're, we're getting our bills paid. January 11th, we're gonna come back into session and take care of a lot of the other things we had on our agenda. Uh, one of the things was the plan of action to increase the uh, uh, participation on our uh, state assessments. That is something that uh, the State Department of Education has notified us that we are under the required amount stated by law. And so we are working on a plan to um, deal with that. The problem that we have is that it's not about kids not being able to have access to the exam, such as if they were uh, enrolled in the wrong school district or if they couldn't make it into school and so forth. It's a matter of um, parents refusing to allow their students to take the assessment. And so we are working with, uh, we're going to be uh, working on a campaign to encourage parents and help people realize the importance of taking that assessment because it is state law and it is about us being accountable for that. So I, uh, a letter will be sent sometime next month, um, uh, especially after the June 11th meeting, and uh, we'll move forward on that, and hopefully we will send in another letter or more editorials in the paper before we take the assessments, which are usually end of March and through April. So. Andy, could you briefly just touch on like what the consequences are if we don't reach that as a school? Okay, so we have been identified. We have to put in a plan of action. The state now will decide whether they will accept it or not and go through the process. And they're going to hold us accountable to show an improvement on that um, percentage. Okay. Um, should it be that we don't make effort, we could be looking at the loss of state and possible federal funding. We could lose accreditation. We, I could be brought before the ethics board for not as a superintendent, not compliant with state law. And um, the state could um, hold us or uh, legally hold us accountable and uh, legal action. Thank you. So did this just happen or has this been going on for a while? This has been going on for quite some time, ever since the Smarter Balance Assessment was brought out in the Common Core. And I believe that was uh, 2013, 2012, 2013. I was still a teacher at the time. And uh, then when I went to Dupree as a principal, um, we were looking at some data, the whole sheet of data, every school district in the state, showing which school district is distinguished and so forth. And here, red, there was a red highlight all the way through the wall. And um, I didn't know what that meant, so I contacted the teacher here to find out it was a participation rate and that it had dropped under the required 95%. Uh, and through, since, through since that time, anytime we didn't meet the uh, participation rate was because of parent refusal. Uh, it was not because of any errors. It was not because of, that was it. I mean, if it was a matter of correcting something on our infinite campus or providing transportation to bring the child in, we could take care of it, but this is a parent refusal situation. About how much in funds are they we looking at losing? Well, you know, we what is it, about two point five million. <laughs> so do you, I also, put that, do you put that in all your letters that you send out to everybody? That that uh, the letter that I'll be sending out actually mimics a lot of the editorial that I put out in the June about participation in state assessments and. Um, there, um, and it also states the law that um, we're held accountable to. So Kelly just did an article for us for the South Dakota Municipal League magazine. 
and talking about wall. And she noted the school and what was the last year we got recognized as a blue ribbon? Do you remember that? 2018. Okay. For 2018. And, uh, and so that's why we haven't been getting any of those recognitions then anymore. Well, they just, just dropped, they dropped the, the exemplary and the distinguished award program in about 2019, but we, uh, the uh, National Blue Ribbon Award, we're uh, up for it every five years. And our five years have been a year or two. So we have this problem. But, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't give a, people a clear reflection of what's on our report card. And, uh, you know, taxpayers want uh, our schools to be accountable. They want to show uh, our progress and so forth. Well, it's not accurate when you're not seeing the results from every student. And I, I would also like to add that the portal that students do take the assessment on, there is a special uh, filter put on it, a security filter, so kids can only go into that area and test. They can't go anywhere else, nor can anyone else come in. And uh, the student information is connected to our uh, infinite campus. So when you're enrolled in our school district, it's uploaded to this portal. So it's the portal that tells us what students do. So they don't do this test? At school, they do it at home. They do it at at, at the school, and and that's what some schools did get notified that they're on this list, um, because there were students that weren't coming into school because of COVID, and those kind of situations. Well, I could find something I could work with that, but this is a a situation where you have refusals, and and it impacts the whole district. You know, teachers work very hard to work with students and to get the scores that we have only to not receive the benefit of it. Are you at liberty to see, say what that number of the 5% is? The parent uh, that you're missing? It's about 94 overall. And then the subcategories like, um, you know, you have your boys, your girls, your most your socioeconomic categories, your special education categories, and so forth, those subcategories are supposed to be at 100%, and some, the lowest one is 53. No, no, this is the uh, state assessment. That is different. you can you have to take it. You have to take it, but uh, we're in a situation where it's a it's a refusal, and um, you know, you might be able to say it could get pretty touchy when you're talking parent rights and and you know what's okay. required. But it is state law that we do this. We are held accountable. So anything else but about school? I guess. Just on that note, um, what about homeschooling? Are they required? No. Okay. So, so when you are a student enrolled in a right. public school, it's a state the, the state, the state designated. And with our parents with students enrolled in public school that are confused. Yes. But now the, the one of the things that's coming out in the legislation says this next legislative session is um, they're trying to work harder in getting vouchers. And and that, if you saw the budget that the governor brought out, it was scholarships for foster kids. And I don't know if you realize this, but if a foster student goes to a public school, they don't need a scholarship. Those scholarships are to get into private school with homeschooling situations. So it's one of those situations where, okay, you want public dollars to go into a private educational area, then they have to be held accountable to all the laws and that we're held accountable to. <clears throat> and there are some private schools that go through the accreditation review, just like a public school. Okay, there are some out there, but 
you know, um, homeschooling situation. I, I feel that or or private school is an accreditation. If they take public dollars, they should have to meet the requirements. Any other questions? Just would like to say congratulations to the Schultz girl for her award at the LNI. Yeah, we, yeah, the, the LNI was quite quite an opportunity for us, and uh, she received a, a star quilt for uh, sportsmanship. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. And you really look good behind that brand new podium. Yeah. <laughs> it's the flannel. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Trask, attorney report, please. I also think that's wonderful. Okay. Um, so um, probably since my last report on the love litigation, um, we had the actual hearing uh, against the loves. So some of this is going to be redundant for the council, but it would be more for the public. But um, leading up to that hearing, um, loves requested a stipulation for protection order. Um, which was many, many pages in length, going into great detail about what was not to be disclosed to the public. And the inference was that there was going to be a great deal of financial information and, and detailed business um, proprietary information um, turned over in discovery to support a demand for damages. What we got was actually less than half of a single page that was completely unsubstantiated um, and it was untimely. They filed it well after the deadline they were supposed to have filed it and really left the, the city scrambling to even um, review, let alone have an expert review and produce an expert opinion on their um, damages submission that was, I mean, the stipulation for protection far exceeded the number of pages that her actual submission amounted to. I think at the hearing, the judge was probably as surprised at Love's damages submission as the city and our attorneys, um, and probably even their attorneys were. Um, so um, because of that, the hearing was not lengthy. Um, there was not a lot to talk about because the hearing was supposed to be based on all of this information that Loves was going to produce to support a big award of damages against the city. And either they didn't believe that they had um, evidence to support that award or they didn't care to produce it, but it was not produced. Um, after that hearing, which was on November 28th, um, the judge indicated that she would likely have a decision out by December 12th. And obviously that hasn't happened. I wouldn't be surprised if the blizzard affected it closed down all the courthouses, filing systems, everything, but um, we don't have a decision to date. Um, so we're once again, balls in their court. Um, there's not a lot we can do at this point, but wait for the judge's decision. Um, before I move on to my next, I, I think I would say in conclusion that I would caution the public against, um, expecting the city to make litigation decisions based on very unusual and extreme weather circumstances that actually affected the entire state. Um, that's not a prudent basis for litigation decisions. Um, and it wasn't just Wall, it, it was Mitchell, it was Chamberlain, it was Phillip, Rapid, Box Elder. Um, I didn't weather the storm in Wall, um, but 
I did weather it in Philip. There's not a Lowe's truck stop in Philip. We had lots of trucks stranded in Philip, and the local businesses went out of their way to accommodate those truckers, um, even trying to get open when they themselves were snowed in. Um, we had local business owners just out of charity hauling fuel to trucks that were going to run out so that they could keep running. Um, I'm very proud of how Philip handled this storm, and I would imagine Wall should be proud as well. Um, and I would also say, while the enforcement of a whole lot of city ordinances was suspended during this five-day very unusual storm, what was enforced was the criminal charges and fines on people who traveled despite severe winter storm warnings. Um, that said, do not travel, do not come to the middle of the state, do not come to this area. So, um, and I know, like so many have said tonight, a lot of it was unforeseeable, but again, you don't make litigation decisions based on unforeseeable weather circumstances. So, uh, my next issue is the video lottery ordinance update. And um, so Carolyn and I have gone back and forth a little bit on this. Um, I am waiting on a call back from the Department of Revenue um, for a bit of clarification because, and I called them yesterday, so um, it just kind of got close to the wire and they're probably backlogged a little bit, but um, the the underlying um, guidance, statutory guidance, is that the video lottery licenses can't exceed the number of on-sale licenses. So, um, so for the city of Wall, that statute is found in 35411. For the city of Wall, we have less than a thousand. So the applicable language, the number of on-sale licenses issued pursuant to subdivision 35424 may not exceed three each for the first 1,000 of population or fraction thereof, and may not exceed one each for each additional 1,500 of population or fraction thereof. So that's pretty straightforward. That's not hard. Um, so then you get to the the actual video lottery license ordinance, which is 42-7A-64. Um, and it says additional criteria for on-sale alcoholic beverage license seeds in a video lottery license establishment. The municipality or county may consider in addition to the criteria for the issuance of an on-sale alcoholic beverage license the following criteria for authorizing video lottery machine placement in establishments issued an on-sale alcoholic beverage license pursuant to subdivision 3542, which is what I read before. Um, and then it just lists out the number of establishments currently licensed for video lottery, proximity to other businesses with video lottery, type of business and manner, which the applicant proposes to operate, location of the business in relation to other business, residential, or activities with the same general within the same general area, extent to which minors frequent the business, and effect the proposed business has on economic development. Those are all additional factors that a municipality can consider, but they're just on top of the underlying that has to be an on-sale license in order to also have a video lottery license. So if we just start there, we could only have three. But we have, in the city of Wall, we have three, plus we have the golf course, which is grandfathered in under a county um, on-sale license. So it came in under a county grant of an on-sale license, and was grandfathered in. So we have that one. And then we have the Red Rock, which has a restaurant on sale license. So we we actually have more than three. <laughs> and so that's where 
Carolyn's running into confusion, and I understand why, because um, technically, you know, both of those, the golf course and the restaurant, full service restaurant license, can have an on sale license. And so potentially the video lottery could be in any one of those three, in any one of those five. Um, but that's not really the way the statute reads, so it's great. And, but then this is where, and this is kind of where my question to the Department of Revenue is going to center. It goes on in, in 42-7A-64, which is the video lottery licensing statute. The governing board, so this is a whatever political subdivision, governmental subdivision, so in this case, the council shall certify on each application filed with the Department of Revenue for a license granted under subdivision 35 or two, which is what we talked about before, the, the three per um, 1,000 of population, um, whether the business premises is authorized for video lottery machine placements. So, one of the questions I have for Department of Revenue is what does certify mean? Because Carolyn has been calling them and they've been saying, this is what you can do, this is what you can't. There hasn't been a certification. There hasn't been a paperwork, a form, anything like that. So is it just a call and they tell you yep or no? Um, and if that's the case, the statute goes on, the lottery may issue a video lottery license to those establishments certified pursuant to this section. So I read that to say, if the Department of Revenue says you can, you can. So that's what I am clarifying right now, because, and, and another nuance to that is, um, Carolyn uh, emailed back and forth with Laura Cunningham who is the gal that I'm waiting on the callback from. She was the senior revenue agent at um, the state business tax division. And, and she said, you have video lottery, they must have an on sale license. And that's obvious based on the statute. Then she says, either RL, which if you see the, the list that all these little acronyms are spelled out, but RL is on sale liquor. Then RB is on off sale malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine, or RW, which is on off sale wine and cider. So she's saying any on sale license could be eligible for video lottery. And, um, that's where it, it's kind of confusing because um, in the number of on sale licenses statute, which is the 35411, it, it's talking about like RL license, on sale liquor, and that's it. But then her email to Carolyn says if you change your ordinance, they could apply for the RB which is on off sale malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine or the RW license, which is the on off sale wine and cider as those are not based on population. So again, going back, I read it to mean if they're not interpreting the statute to restrict it to on sale liquor licenses, we don't have to worry about the three licenses or even the five if you count the golf course and Red Rock because she's saying you can include the on off sale malt beverage and farm wine and the on off sale wine and cider. So before I make any recommendation about changing our statute, I, th those are the things that I want to ask her questions about, but I think at the end of the day, um, in the actual video lottery statute, the 42 7864, 
Um, the governing board shall certify an application with the Department of Revenue for a license, whether the business premises is authorized for video lottery machine placement. And the lottery may issue a video lottery license to those establishments certified pursuant to this section. So I'm kind of thinking whether or not I can ever make sense of how they're interpreting the statute to way more on sale licenses than three per 1,000 of population. If they authorize it and they certify that, I think we're good. But I will do more research on this. <laughs> okay. um, yes, Carolyn, would you work, uh, unless anyone has any comments or questions or understands a bit of what <laughs> we've <laughs> heard? Clear as mud. Uh, and uh, I don't want to take much more time on this at this point. I can see there's got to be a lot more discussion and research. So, Carolyn, would you continue to work with her? And and I realize that we need an answer on this sooner than later. So perhaps by the next meeting, we can get something going here. So thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. All right. Thank okay. you. All right. So that brings us to the mayor report. Uh, first item. Uh, the South Dakota Housing and Echo Valley update. Uh, we had another Zoom meeting with uh, South Dakota Housing with the Echo Partners and with Stan and Rick. And we were uh, we, we were fortunate to, uh, to go through some concerns that they had indicated to us, but we did succeed in uh, getting them to get it on the agenda and discussed at their December 16th meeting. And the board of directors did make a conditional approval of our loan with the idea that we would meet some different spe uh, specifications. Um, one being a rewrite of a covenant with Echo Valley and another one with uh, some way of putting some funding aside to help uh, collateralize the, um, the loan. So that was extremely good news to get uh, to that point. And so we're still in conversation, but we do have conditional approval. So we're, we're getting a lot closer than we were. Uh, another thing that I wanted to uh, bring to our attention is that at our last meeting, while we were here, they had the football or the fall uh, awards and the South Dakota Football uh, Association considered the community of Wall as being a friend of football and they gave us this award and Lex uh, thought that the best place to display that is here in our office but they just wanted to recognize all the things that we did for, for the football team on their uh, magnificent journey to winning um, that championship. So I wanted to share that with you. And then a follow-up for the library. Uh, it was brought to our attention recently that uh, there had been some inappropriate calls going into the library to address that issue. We met with law enforcement and uh, determined a plan of action. We got phone IDs on the library and every other phone with the city now so that we can identify those kinds of calls if those are, are coming in and we uh, worked out a strategy with the, the librarian. So I wanted to report that we it was brought to our attention and we followed up and we've taken action. And then we had a storm and so she hasn't been in the library, so, so that's <laughs> but it's all showing up on the ID if there's any coming in. So, okay, so that's all. Okay, so Callie then, that brings us to your finance officer report. Good evening. Um... I just have a short report today. Due to the winter storm, trash pickup was moved to December 22nd, this Thursday. It has not been changed with the cold temperatures. We'll keep you updated on Facebook as well as the red alert system if it does change. Um, and with that, we've had a couple people asking if that delay in trash pickup changes their utility bill at all. It does not because they're picking up two weeks worth of trash and they base their billing by tonnage. So that's all the update I have. Have a good evening. Thank you, Kelly. 
Okay, finance officer report. Um, so last week I was supposed to be gone to uh, here for my municipal board meeting that I sit on. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped to that. <laughs> First of all, council meeting changes. Um, typically in January, the second meeting, there is a conflict with some other meetings that are being held in here. And so um, we should have it on the 19th, I believe. And I'm asking if we can move it to the 24th of uh, January, if anybody has any conflicts mm -hmm. with that. And then I have a conflict with the February meeting. Um, well, I just think if we did it the 24th, or yeah, I'm, I'm out of town, scheduled to be out of town the 2nd of February. And so I would like to move it to the 6th of February on Monday, that meeting instead of the 2nd. Okay, so is there any objections or concerns with those two dates going January 24th and February 6th? The meeting. And I would need a motion to include these dates in this. So I'll make that motion. Okay, <laughs> some of us still checking our calendar. Um, all good. Okay. Carolyn, what is the 6th of February? Monday. It's a Monday. Okay, thank you. I'll second the motion. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded that we change council meeting dates to January 24th and February 6th. All those, any other comments or concerns? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Yeah. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, now talk about your now board meeting. About it. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be in here, but of course, with the prediction of the weather, they chose to schedule a Zoom meeting, and so that was on Wednesday, and it was a good meeting. Uh, most everybody was in attendance of it, of course. And um, we do have a new uh, municipal league director, Yvonne Taylor. I don't know if you guys are familiar with she that name. She's been with municipal league forever. Um, we now have um, David Reese. What's last name? Reese. Reese, yeah. <laughs> I just threw a blank. Um, I think he's going to be very good. So he actually ran the board meeting and gave us a legislative updates of what bills we're going to be watching for this during the session and getting our input, of course, um, how we felt we should be looking at it, any changes needed. Yvonne will still be um, lobbying for us. We do have a contract that we approved at that meeting for her to continue to do some lobbying and kind of show him the ropes a little bit. He has a little bit of experience with lobbying, but he's feeling very comfortable that he has you on there for a long enough. So um and then that's kind of my conflict in the February uh I'll be out of town that first week and then to move it to the sixth because the group supper will be the February seventh. So I will be asking again, but that's when we do meet with the legislators and um, and talk to them one-on-one -on -one, and then you can go to uh, the next day to the Capitol and watch some sessions and stuff. So it's really a good education. That's the update that I have. Okay, thank you. All right, here, I'm, I'm sorry you weren't here earlier. I understand where you were, but you got lots of kudos tonight so far. Oh, thank about you. About the man. great job that the city has. And I know you guys were working at 4 30 in the morning until 10 30 at night. So people are very appreciative of that. Thank you. So, with that, would you like to give us a re report? And I um, understand you do need to leave again. Yeah. Uh, follow up on Jack Wolf's Corner. I talked to the Dahl brothers and they were. They were going to come down and take care of it. The guy that was supposed to clean it up came down the night the storm hit and rolled his vehicle in the ditch out west of town. So I don't know what's going to happen now. So, but they said they'll clean it up. It was just some of the stuff that they're going to use. Some most of the wood they're going to use in another project and haul it out later. Okay. So, well, I do re appreciate that kind of reaction from a new business that we addressed 
So I appreciate dolls for doing that because um, to be able to just communicate with them and they agree that yes, they will clean up their site. That is very much appreciated. That you can send a text the first one when you do the work. Better call. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think that's pertinent. Yeah. So like, well, I guess we'll build a fence around it then. Like, I better call. <laughs> you your text. <laughs> <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah. So no, they were. They were willing to. Uh, they they didn't know that that guy because they had paid that guy to stay there and clean it up, and they paid him a bunch of money, and he just. Did some work in that. So they didn't even realize it. Yeah, they left. I think they finished up there and they said that they went to Tennessee and they had just got back from Tennessee the day oh. after that meeting that we talked about. So they were in, in, in the state. So, well, that's very good. And they seem like really good guys. Yeah. Uh, Blizzard update. There was a blizzard. There was a blizzard. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad we went out and worked during it or else we would probably still be snowed in. So had a few little, one of the drive line on our loader broke, um, a bolt broke off, but Todd TDM was there to help Trevor fix it. So we got that fixed up pretty quick. Um, we leased the, leased the loader. Glad I called the guy. He I called him Monday morning at like 7.30 and he had it here before noon. So we were the lifesaver to have that. Moved a lot of snow. Um, first time using the V plow on the on the blade. I know why Jim liked it so much. It's kind of fun to see this <laughs> giant snowdrifts. <laughs> but uh, I think it went really well. Um, the guys all did really good. Um, no complaining. No, just they were there on time and ready to go. So thank you for helping up the school. Panty did mention that. Yep, with all the work that you guys did up there. Right? Very much appreciated. Yeah, I think every morning for like three days, I West River guys follow me out to West River and busted through the snow banks out there. So, so yeah, there's a lot of help by everyone, and there's a lot of people in the community. I mean, a ton of people that helped move snow. Joe, Chad, John Kitterman, Jim Kitterman. There's just a ton of people that that help to move snow. So. A lot of people bought us lunch, breakfast, which is really nice. Obviously we appreciated that too. So it was nice to have a decent meal instead of a microwave sandwich. So what's your next plan next, then? Next plan is to haul some of it off. Um gonna start with like the safety, traffic safety, you know, stuff that's in the road. So people can see we'll move that off and then we'll go to the people that I asked if we could pile snow on their property. Um, because we used to pile it where the jackalope is and now that's gone. So I asked Zach and Zach was grateful enough to let us do it there. Appreciate that. Yeah. We'll move it off and straighten up the lot again if we mess it up in the springtime. So and then just everywhere else. Yeah. Hopefully we don't get another big one. That was all concrete in there, right, Zach? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll just kind of keep I'll keep an eye on stuff of it. If we're gonna get something big, then I might line some people up to be a little more aggressive and hauling it out. But I don't know if you guys see all the time, but there's a lot of snow. So right now, what is your hauling plan? Um, it'll be I think we're gonna use TDM. We'll use one of their trucks and and just one of their trucks, and then our truck and the two loaders. So we should be able to get caught with them with that. It's kind of split up in the different places. The saving wind will be here at 10 o'clock. Tonight? Or tomorrow? tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I went out today and kind of cleared stuff out wider and went out on Stone Drive where it was really bad. I don't know if people thought maybe it was moving people's driveways, but I was just <laughs> getting it back so it wouldn't fill in as much, hopefully. And Kim Beers went out in the in the field to the west and made some windrows. So hopefully that'll that'll catch some of that's that snow some, I think. Yeah. Like coming into the town. Out. So I could move my house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I was just up there when there was snow when you fill in. Yeah, so it was blow Mary the Ark. <laughs> but no, that's that's our plan is to start working on home. So. Okay. Thank you for getting all the way open. Yeah, sorry, it was we, last minute, but it's deep trucks, over there. <laughs> the trucks didn't show up until today. So we it worked out fine. Plus, we got a bus cat back up to the moment, so. Yeah, no, it was an interesting story. Okay, any other questions? <clears throat> okay. I didn't even get any. Well, I did hit a West River electric truck that didn't leave. <laughs> then you just moved it. it uh, yeah, I, I did move it pretty good. <laughs> They're parked in front of the Red Rock, and you know, Tayden's pretty new, and we can we take the loader and the, the blade and push a whole bunch together. And he started pushing me over to the side, and I looked over and seen the West River truck move. And so I went inside the Red Rock and like, hey guys, and they all started laughing. <laughs> I went out there and it just shined the bumper up a little bit. So the tires. You're, I hate to ask, are the two unlicensed vehicles in your road for snow removal? Up by my end of town. Oh, there's a lot of them that were in the road. <laughs> yeah, I just see them been there all fall. Yeah, they, <clears throat> yeah, they're in the road. Just trying to work around. Yeah, it does work better if they're off the street. Yeah. When you come through. Okay. And then costs. Oh, um, I don't know. We we leased that loader for five thousand dollars for the month. Um, and then of course just a few more man hours. And uh, I did tell Todd to save right down his time for helping us work on that loader and getting it back together and stuff like that too. So. Um, it got kind of scary there for a little while. We ran out of fuel. Calvin ran out of fuel. And BJ didn't have any fuel. But luckily, we got some. So, yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. Thank you. So now I'm going to go see if I can help those guys get their yeah. pickup. They drove. A guy drove in there. I don't know what they're hauling. I haven't seen it, but they they had a guy hauling something and he went on the old road, Highway 14, and where the bridges washed out over there, they got stuck. And the guy just left the vehicle. The owners had to come out from Illinois. Get it. So I'm helping those guys out. So it's a truck down there? It's a it's a not a semi truck, it's a big uh one ton daughter. Oh, okay. 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 So yeah, I was gonna go from the west, and it's like that ditch is pretty deep. I was to see if I can go from Snowboard, but the ones I am using my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Got stuck once the other day. Yeah, we know about that. So get yeah. stuck. I mean that part. So okay. All right. Anything else? No. All right. Be careful. Thank you. Uh -huh. See you guys. See ya. See ya. Here. There's the carrot cake. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. I'm watching. I'm on the diet. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that brings us um, to items for discussion. And no action will be taken. Does anyone have any comments? Just, and I should ask here, but, but, oh. Um, Linda has asked me about the lights on the outside of the library. Linda, help me. Do not work. Um, and there's a piece of tape over the the switch and just wondered what was going on with that. And I think it's been that way for quite a while. Okay. Well, you know what? We're not going to address that when these guys are like mad. Heavens, no. So put that on our to do list. Yeah. But Please. I think there is a reason. There, well, she's, she said, I, I know there's a reason, but I can't. Yeah. I've asked about it before. Yeah. If you turn the switch on, it'll shock you. Maybe that's it. <laughs> but I, th I think it's something to do with that. It's old wiring or something, but I'm just, she asked me to 
for yeah, now. Okay. Yeah. No, not on the top of our list. No, no point, but we will get it taken care of. And then, I don't oh. have an item for discussion, but I want to put a little plug in there for economic development since we have a lot of business owners in here. Um, I sent out surveys to you guys today, um, just asking about how economic development can help your business and then also some business information. And then I'd like to meet with business owners and managers here in the community to see how economic development can help you guys. So if you could fill that out and get back to me on that, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, I can't do it on my among the survey on my work one, but I did transfer it to here tonight. Oh, so awesome. can I talk to Rick for a minute? I'm glad you got the did you send it mail or? I sent it email. <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna send them to meet with you guys too, so I'll bring a hard copy. <laughs> Once again, I did send. <laughs> okay, so another item that I want um, to to address here is what was the concern or the liability issue or whatever as far as letting people into this facility if we have another storm. So can we put that on our to-do list of exploring that coming back um, at the next meeting then? So that if we, uh, I just feel confident that we are probably gonna run into this issue again and we've gotta be better prepared than what we were. But I, I wanna delve into what the issue was with this building. Okay, so that brings us to the next city council meeting, which will be January 5th at 6.30. And uh, we are uh, ready to go into executive session. If I could have a motion to do so, please. I make the motion that we go into executive session for the purpose of discussing legal personnel issues according to SDCL 1-25-2. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Have a Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. I mean, snow is kind of like water, it just goes where it wants. <laughs> okay, you can do whatever you want. It's, 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 Okay, so I am going to declare us out of executive session. We'll move on to item number 24. Uh, do I have a motion in that respect? Yes, I make a motion we earmark $500,000 as collateral. Okay, there's been a motion to um, earmark $500,000 for collateral for the, with the South Dakota Housing Authority. Is there a second? Second. And Kelly has seconded. Any other conversation or questions? If not, all those uh, in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Number 25 is revision to employee plot policy 6.51. Would I have a motion in that effect? I would make the motion to approve the revision to the policy for health insurance reimbursement 6.5. Okay, there's a, been, been a motion by Mike and a second by Jerry to revise the 6.51 um, uh, policy. Any more discussion, questions, concerns? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, is there any other uh, business to come before this 
um, council. Treasury bonds mature in 20 or 30 years. Well, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> right, 20 to 30. Yeah, yeah. I've never made Three different ones, 20 or 30 years. Okay, and they're 7%, right? Okay. Well, it's, it's didn't say that. Okay. All right. So now we know three bonds. So with that being said, the meeting is adjourned. Myron was slightly <laughs> off. Well, slightly. slightly. The, the... Well, five and ten, but... <laughs>